guys it is day one afternoon one after a full morning of national homelessness week events including including the opening of national homelessness week for those of you that missed the interview on abc radio today with myself and josh lavelle with rick goddard here it is rick goddard on abc radio hobart I'm standing opposite uh, Josh Lavelle, who often does sport for us. G'day. How are you going, Rick? Uh, very well, thanks. He's here with Darren Petty, filmmaker, who's filmmaking right now as we speak, which is so sort of meta, Darren. G'day. Morning, Rick. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, and you're out and about uh, with Catholic Care over this week for Homelessness Week. Why did they want to get you on board? They've invited me on board to, uh, I guess, raise awareness for the for the week, giving my filmmaking skills and social media presence and things like that and um, I just jumped in both feet and here we are day what? one morning one what was your experience of being without a home well okay uh, look yeah so when I was 14 I moved out of home uh, due to circumstances of um, kind of like uh, very early domestic violence experience and then we moved to Tasmania um, when I was in year four and our stepfather sort of roamed around the country looking for us and found us and um, tried to, uh, you know, a uh, bit more domestic violence going on, things like that. Jara House took us in and then ended up uh, me turning 14 and having to move out of home due to just the house, um, just uh, not being able to live with, with, with my mum anymore. Mm. And um, mum's well. Hi mum. She's listening. Um, and then I just went from couch to couch, room to room, garage to garage for the next lot of years, and uh, it was extremely difficult. And that's uh, that was my experience. Not I wasn't on the streets. I never I never got to the streets to that level. But um, we were speaking to Kathy Kerr earlier this week, and a big component of homelessness is the actuality of what is homelessness. And a big component of that is people that are living house to house and couch to couch with friends and as family. A, as a teenager, what are the challenges of living like that? What what are what what obstacles does that create for you? Just managing to do what you're trying to do. I was asked this yesterday under Mercury, and that and one of the questions that question was posed to me, and, and the answer that I gave was this: I was one of the only people that didn't have to wear uniform to school to high school at Taruna, and. And no one knew why, I just, I just thought it was cool. But I wasn't, I didn't, I couldn't wash my clothes. Mm. I wasn't able to um, ask parents and, and friends to wash my clothes for me and on various times. And I just asked the principal if I could, you know, if they could help me out in some way. And that, one of those things was to not wash my school uniform. So that was one of the one of the um, things. But look, I think a lot of the services that they got me through, like Colony 47 and The Link and all those type of um, organisations, they got me through a... Uh, a lot of it because they gave me vouchers and and references for um, you know different things and and look the challenges are vast but one of the one of the main ones was um, you know just getting around like a normal person just acting as if you are a normal teenager and as a teenager you don't want to be seen as someone that's not living in a home you want to be seen as you know um, with your peers and yeah. I wasn't I wasn't at all. Average, averageness and normalness is so important for teenagers, even in the ways we rebel, I think. Mm. It's 20 to 7. You're listening to Darren Petty, and uh, he is working this week to raise awareness and drive discussion about homelessness and those kinds of invisible homelessness that's really hard, I think, for people to grasp mm. and understand. Yeah, well, I guess when you look at the stats and sort of carry on when Darren's talking, it's only 8% of people are actually sleeping rough in Tasmania per night. So, you know, 92% are sort of, you know, how Darren grew up, sort of couch to couch, garage to garage. And, you know, it's quite concerning when you don't actually know how many people or you can't see the homeless mm. because, you know, are they visible to the people that are, you know, just going doing their day-to-day -day life? Like, are, are actually people thinking about it? And I guess mm. that's where Darren and myself, we want to sort of shed light on the whole issue and sort of specifically look at those organisations that are doing such good work but are maybe not getting the resources that they could need to do some, you know, better work. And it's not necessarily people who you're going to help out once and will set themselves on the right path, is it, Darren? If you're talking about your background where you're evading a domestic violence situation, but then with your own relationship within the family becoming problematic. 
Absolutely. It's... And maybe you're not being the easiest person to live with at that age. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I grew up uh, a very meek and mild um, young boy. Mm. And then, uh, ex of course, experiencing domestic violence turned me into um, a confused young man. And um, I've, I've never been violent ever, you know, in, in towards other people, in unless I've been in a cage. Mm. Or doing jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah, and doing, doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But... Um, Look, it just became difficult to, to live in the home with mum. She was she was um, struggling on her own um, yeah. with her own um, demons. So, and I think that's a very common experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, single mums that have experienced domestic violence and bringing up kids struggle to look after themselves, let alone their, their children. Mm. So, so the problems do arise there, and that's what arose, arose with me. And, and off I went. Social workers said, you know, jump out, off you go. Um, and put me on the path of living away from home and, and, and living away from home allowances and all these sort of things and um, it was it was tough but uh, yeah like you said it's it's not there's no quick fix and I don't I, I'm not I'm not here to try and fix anything I'm here to try and raise awareness of what's what's occurring and homelessness is, homelessness is not just um, living on the streets it, it does occur uh, yeah 92 percent are living home to home garage to garage couch to couch and it's a scary statistic, Rick. And in terms of the situation in Hobart, some of the people you're working with, who are the Kingbury Helping Hands? What do they do? Kingbury Helping Hands are a wonderful group of little... Yeah, they are, aren't they? Special, old, and Edna, the one who wonderful sort of started it. ladies. A beautiful mm. group of women that um, they do a, a, a vast array of things. They, they collect uh, uh, second-hand goods and food and yeah, gifts. They, they take Louis Van out once a fortnight, I yeah, think. Wow. Once a week, once yeah, down at Kimbra. And um, Edna, she's a powerhouse. Uh, yeah, she's, a, <laughs> she's, she's one of a kind, Rick, that's for sure. Five foot ball of energy and yeah. um, just helping so many people. And she's got a, her own personal story that we got out of her the other day. I spoke with her for an hour or so and, and she's come up the same way. She came from a broken home and, and, and death in the family and things like this and, and just, you know, she's helping because of her experience. Mm. And that's why I think where we all connect. You see? Do you think as an adult, like you've established yourself as a filmmaker, you've been through a range of different kind of pathways and careers, do you think you ever get to feel normal again? Never. I mean, I've, 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 experienced, I've experienced homelessness, I guess, throughout my entire career. And I've never been able to set my feet. Because at the age of 21, I was bankrupt. Because I'd gone and done a lot of different stupid things throughout my teenage years with drugs and alcohol and, and giving up... <coughs> giving up jobs and things mm. like this and and so I was bankrupt from 21 so I wasn't able to then secure any type of um, you know uh, loan or, or anything um, rental or anything like that so throughout my life I've been sort of um, embracing the fact that I am I am different to society and I sit outside the society sort of you know uh, rules and regulations and um, you know there's also criminal convictions and things like that that I've got um, later on in life, but they, they all attribute to, um, you know, not being able to fit into the norm and being able to do what normal people do. Can that be a problem sometimes if government policy is focused towards this idea, this assumption that everyone aspires towards the same middle class values and that unless you fit in, we, we can't help you? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, and it does, it does err towards that, that spectrum of middle class being the benefit, the manufacturers of all that all that society has to offer, and if you sit outside of that, if you're above it, fine, you know you can you can get on with your life. But if you're below it, it's extremely hard to do the smallest smallest things. And one of the things I wanted to touch on, just in regards to that, is uh, we met with uh, Deb from a poor up. Is that right, Josh? Yep. Yeah, and jo and and as Josh said to me, a poor up want to come on board, and, and they want who, us who, to who are poor up. Josh? A, a poor up is simply an an organisation started by Deb Connolly who really wants to help animals with people that are experiencing homelessness or sort of disruptions around the house. So I guess she can organise their animals to go to foster carers, why maybe the people are going through court dates or experiencing homelessness, experiencing rent difficulties can okay, help so you don't, animals um, get you don't their feet. Don't lose your pet. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess what's yeah. important, what's Darren and myself have found out that a lot of people will feel, feed their animals before they will feed themselves because obviously they are children to the family. They are mm. so integral to the part of, you know, how we live. Pets are so important to us. And I guess, you know, animals sometimes 
in t and in tough si situations come first. So well, I guess because if you've been let down by people, you know your dogs. Oh, exactly right. And I didn't know that. I didn't know any of that, Josh, did I? No, you didn't. And you didn't. I said, Josh said, I pull up when I um, jump on board uh, with us and get a bit of uh, coverage through the filmmaking and whatnot. And I said, well, no, mm. we're going to focus on human beings. And then I met Deb and she talked us through the story and, uh, and how it all came about. She found a man, a um, uh, homeless man, and said, you know, would you like a help feeding a dog? And he looked up and, yes, I would. And, and I just was shocked by that. Mm. And I wasn't aware really of that component of it, and and that's my awareness, mm. and I've been that's been brought to my awareness. So, I think that there's so much out there that we don't know. Mm. And uh, feeding your pet, I had no idea. I just that, didn't think of it because I'm not. I don't have a pet, you know. Exactly. And there's I'm so never able to. yeah, and there's so many good organisations out there that we probably don't hear about day to day, you know, week to week that we want to shed light on this week. And, that's what and you know, a, a Pour Up and Kingborough Helping Hands are two of the ones that we've sort of chosen to get behind this week. So that's a leg up for Pour Up, which is presumably P-A-W, is it? Up? Yep. 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 A-P-A-W, up. Yep. yep. And Darren, <laughs> if people want to follow you this week as you're making these films and telling these stories, where sure. do they? Just jump on Facebook, Darren Petty. Uh, Instagram, uh, Darren Petty. I've got it, my at is always going to be Darren Petty Films, as it has been since was born from the, the Luke Jackson years. And, um, you know, that's another man that, that, that uh, rings a bell in my mind that uh, has experienced similar situations to me mm. and, and my, mine to him. And, you know, this is where it all started. I was drawn to someone like Luke because um, he's experienced very, very tough times. And um, with my, I mean, myself, I, I've, I've given up everything this week. I'm very busy. I've got a lot of things going on. I'm traveling a lot. Um, I'm making many, many films. I've got so many films to edit and, and work on and documentary films. But you know what? It all stops this week and we are focusing on Homeless This Week 2019. Uh, if you wanted to follow along, Facebook, Instagram, jump on my website um, where we're going to be selling uh, T-shirts. And all the uh, proceeds for those T-shirts are going to Kingma Helping Hands and a pour up. Um, it's darrenpetty.com forward slash shop. And uh, you can have a look at that work there. And in terms of raising awareness, the government policy has been pretty proactive towards addressing homelessness, getting houses built, all of that kind of nuts and bolts stuff. But what do you think just people can do at home? Oh, wow. So much. And, and, and just in terms of those organisations we just mentioned, they can, people can get in touch with the Poor Up and the Kimber Helping Hands and they can help the smaller organisations. Look, I'm here, I'm not here to discuss or help uh, government agencies or the bigger conglomerates in, in, in mm. per se, but I'm here to help out the smaller organisations and the ground the ground mm. level, the people working on the ground, boots on the ground type people, and that is the Kimber Helping Hands and the Poor Up. And what they can do is get in touch with those organisations and see if they can help. We, Josh and I have got a, um, a box coming today to my office. We do. Um, yeah, so people uh, can come and donate food or needs for animals, so, you know. So that, that, yeah, that's going to be for, great. For, for, for extended period. Mm. Mm. So okay. yeah, pe people can obviously you know volunteer or give money. It's yeah, it's going to be a massive week. And or just get in touch with me this week, and, and yeah. I'll put you to task. Great, fantastic, <laughs> great to talk to you both. Thank you, Thanks, Josh Lavelle and Darren Petty. So we just finished up with Rick Goddard on ABC Radio, and I'd just like to point out what's in the foyer down here at the ABC building free on a tree. Guys, this is a service where you can bring in your jackets, your waterproof jackets, things like that, and they will go on a tree within the Hobart area and they are free to people. And they are free to people that are in need. So please guys, bring your jackets down here. There's only one. So please, bring your jackets down to ABC building. Uh, where is it? Where are we, Josh? Where's the ABC building? Um, next to the... What is it? The... Just across from the Aquatic Centre. Across from the, uh, the ABC building is across from the Aquatic Centre, guys. And the We're big not, roundabout. And the big roundabout. So bring your jackets down to the ABC building, guys, for free on a tree. Thank you, Rick Goddard. See you guys for more Homeless This Week 2019 soon.